Okay, since we are live, I'll give them a few minutes to um, get in here. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Okay. All righty. Hey, y'all. I haven't been here in a minute. It's been a good couple of weeks. It may be even longer than that. It's been a month or so. Hey, Monique. Hey, Ayana. Hey, Bunny. So I am here with Ray. I'm saying that right, Ray, right? Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm here with Ray, and this is Indy Loves, I call it running my mouth on a Friday night. <laughs> this started when the pandemic started, and we just, I just picked a bunch of readers, I mean, authors that I liked, and I was like, I want to talk to y'all. And they was like, okay, we'll talk to you, Josh, we'll talk. So, um how that started, and I was doing it on a Friday night, and then I kind of got fell behind in my reading, mm-hmm. and it was like, you know, I don't want nobody to feel like, um, you know, I'm shunning them, but I just had to catch up on um, my reading, and actually, you're going to be talking with Ayana and Allegra on Monday, Monday right? Yes, on Monday. So, Ayana asked me, I was like, she's going to think I clipped her wings, but I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> She said, are you playing the talk to me? And I was like, I don't know her. So, no, I don't think so. And then when I finished the book and I was like, I got questions. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, I got questions. I got comments. I was yeah. like, you got questions that need answers. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Let me see. And so when you gave me the date before this, I was like, oh, hell. But Yana's cool. She know I didn't clip her wings intentionally at all. So. It's all love. Yeah, she said it's all love. It's all love. Yes. And I'm going to be sitting right there on Monday, laying across my <laughs> bed, right in, right in tune with hers as well. Good. So we are all, um, I don't want to say we're amazed because new artists pop up all the time. Mm-hmm. But um, we are truly, truly intrigued that this is your very first book. So is this your very first published book or is this your first book? This is my very, very first book, completed book, fully completed. Okay. Very first. Okay. And what brought about, I'm not going to talk about the story yet. How did you start writing? How did you get into it? These glasses feel like they just a little too much for today. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I've been writing for a while now, but mm-hmm. I actually stopped. I stopped writing in high school, I think, and I I didn't start back up until I started writing this book. So it had been years since I wrote anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, then let's jump right on in here. Where did this story come from? (laughs) So I like to read romance, obviously. And Mm -hmm. I noticed that the ones that I gravitated to the most were the, I guess you could say, like the realistic ones. Like, mm-hmm. it's fun to read about, like, mansions and super famous people and rich people. But mm-hmm. the ones that I really, really enjoy and, and loved were the, the super realistic ones. And then I also love, like, slow burn romances. Like, I love a long book. Mm-hmm. I, I need to be, like, into that book for, for days at a time and getting to know characters. So, mm-hmm. And it's just like, I couldn't find the the type of book I want or the type of story that I wanted one day. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just try to write it and see how it goes. And so that's how I started writing it. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, when you read the synopsis, oh, okay, he's a thug and he's going to be a rapper. So he's going to blow up and da 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 Not at all, right? <laughs> um, not, and that was the curveball. Like, okay, nah, he... Nah, he stuck to his guns like, I got to make this money for my <laughs> family. So, um, yeah, they saying you did that. Well done. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so, guys, I was telling Ray before we came on that about our spoiler page and how um, we was going in on our spoiler page. So, I'm going to... 
Okay. I'm going to um, pull some stuff from our spoiler page and let her know some of the things that we was talking about. We didn't get too ratchet. Um, <laughs> we didn't get too ratchet in there. So I do know that the story is based um, from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Now, are you from Atlanta, live in Atlanta, visit Atlanta? How did you place the story here in Atlanta? So I'm actually from Houston. I'm not from Atlanta. Okay. I've visited Atlanta some. Okay. Uh, I've been to Atlanta, what, two or three times? And I felt okay. like it made sense to place the story there just because, I mean, of course, Atlanta, the the music scene is really big. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, as a person that's not from there, whenever you go and you go out in mm-hmm. Atlanta, especially if you go to like smaller places and bars and stuff, you hear local music and stuff like that. And it, it's different, you know? Mm-hmm. So I feel like it just made sense to place the story there. Okay. Cause that's where I was trying to figure out the college. I was like, I didn't <laughs> say what college is, what college they had. But and I Lord purposely has- left it like that. I, I was like, left it. So it was like, okay, so maybe they had an HBCU. So and like, I work near the AU center. Uh-huh. So I was like, okay, it was at Walmart, but if they was at Walmart, they wouldn't have had to drive them all the way to Walmart because they could walk across the street to Walmart from Clark. So, right. Hmm. I, I swear I was like trying to figure it out. I was trying to place it and I ain't had no luck. So I didn't know which college you. <laughs> I purposely changed places and stuff. <laughs> oh, which is good. Which is good. I mean, you know, there was no, there was landmarks, but then it wasn't a whole lot of landmarks. So it wasn't uh-huh. like, um, no, she said it wasn't at Clark. I'm like, what she said it wasn't Clark because the Walmart is straight across the street from Clark. Track me. I'll be picking up on little bit of stuff. <laughs> so they was at the Walmart. Now I'm getting picked them to the Walmart. Uh-huh. And then they had to take them, they had to drive somewhere else. Clark was is literally the Walmart is across the street from Clark. Don't tell me, baby, because I work up the street. She said, I, I know. know. She said, I know. I purposely left I it know. like that. <laughs> okay, but was it uh, HBCU or you just left it all? It's just, it's just a college. At first, in my head, I was thinking I wanted her to be at an HBCU, but then I just said, I'll just leave it as an ambiguous type of thing and let the reader place her at whatever college they felt like she would be at. George, somebody, <laughs> that's Monique. <laughs> she said, George didn't even know what <laughs> he sure didn't. <laughs> I ain't seen you to school to get pregnant. What is this? <laughs> but I did. I did. I loved. I loved so many of the characters, even the not so. You know, Dominic. It was like, oh, come on, bro. You got to do better. Right. You got to do better. But all of this stuff. I mean, it was so touching. You wanted to. At least me, I'll say me. Mm-hmm. You wanted to um, hate Eve for what she put him through, but he loved his mama regardless. And that's usually what we do. We, I mean, no matter, I'm not saying me per se, but that's usually what, what happens because I work with children in the inner city and it doesn't matter how bad their mama, te- their parents treat them. That's, they, that's my mama. No, right. I'm not going to tell you nothing. I'm not going to tell you I didn't eat last night. I'm not going to tell you that she pinched me. I had a set of twins when I taught pre-K years ago and one of them got a, a whooping and the other one said, but she didn't mean to do it. She didn't mean to hit him that hard. I mean, like, so that's what kids do. So regardless of what he put him through living in a motel and him being so young and having to um, take care of her, right? Um, that was a lot for him. And regardless to how, even how she killed herself in front of him, he could, I mean, he held all of that in. That's a lot to hold in for a child. Mm-hmm. But he still had, and with all the disturbing things that he said about her, he had still had so much love for her. So mm-hmm. much love for her. And you felt like she, I don't say me, felt like she loved him in spite of everything that she was going through herself, her inner um, turmoil that she was going through. Because we never got to the root of what, her issues, but we just knew she had some issues, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and even Diane, um, that's auntie's name, right? I told you I didn't take no notes. Oh yeah, I didn't <laughs> take no notes. You know, they know I usually have a bunch of notes. I ain't take no notes. I'm just like, I'm going off the top of my head. But even Diane, she never really said too that her sister was, you know, disturbed or had issues or they had 
you know, anything about their upbringing. So I feel like she was young. She got caught in a bad situation and she was trying to do the best that she could. Mm -hmm. Um, And even in those moments when um, she was not lucid in herself, she still showed her son a lot of love. There was just a lot of love there, despite all the disturbing things that he that he went through as a child. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And also the thing with Diane and her not touching on it. To me, it was kind of like a I feel like in the black community, a lot of the times we know somebody in our family they may have some mental health issues going on, but a lot of times what we do is we ignore it. We sweep it under the rug. Mm-hmm. And we say, oh, you know, that's them. Like the whole time she's telling mm-hmm. Claudette about Eve and the type of life that she lived, that's just my sister. That's just how she was. You know, mm-hmm. and a lot of times we do that. So To this day, we do that. Yep. To this day, we do that. Um, Instead of looking at the root of the issue. Right. You're right. I mean, I heard my mother tell a family member, you need to go get you some help. And I was like, oh, that was so harsh the way you said it. Well, it's true. She she needs to go get some help. There's something something is wrong. And I was like, okay. All righty. <laughs> so um Claudette, I ain't gonna lie to you. I did not like um her friend. I didn't like her friend until the end of the book. I didn't like her. <laughs> Poor Autumn. Nobody liked Autumn. Autumn, I don't think. <laughs> I didn't like Autumn, I swear. Autumn. And it wasn't that she, I just felt like Autumn didn't know how to, she was a friend, Mm -hmm. but she didn't know how to be a friend without, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it, without being so pushy. She was very overbearing, yes. Very Very. overbearing, very over, (laughs) sorry, you should say Autumn was a horrible friend. (laughs) I don't think she was <laughs> Yeah, I don't think she was horrible, but for the longest I didn't like her. I mean, it was almost like 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 you like Claudette had no sense at all. Mm-hmm. And she was a very smart girl. Just because she didn't swing in the circles that Autumn did and was flaunting around and changing her wig every other day. That don't mean <laughs> she was a dummy. And I guess that's what I felt like. Like, don't treat her like she's a dummy. She's a very very smart girl because when she, I didn't know if that man was crazy or not. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if um, the first guy that the, that the club they went to, I didn't know if he was crazy or not, you know. And when she spoke up, oh, the promoter, Vaughn? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Vaughn, yeah. I didn't know if he was crazy or not. And when she spoke up, I was like, oh, oh, wait, don't, you know. And even, even then, Autumn was like, what are you doing? Be quiet. Mm-hmm. But Dominic saw something like Swiss seats and Pomo. Pomo, oh, no, he just <laughs> he tried, man. He tried. <laughs> he was trying, and he kept. I was left when he kept saying, "A typical friend, you know, fired me since you <laughs> fired me and hired her. You fired me." <laughs> like, dude, you couldn't do for him what her brain was able to do at him. all. Yeah. So, where did this that actually where did this story actually come from, or just? What made you want to write about a rapper and this sweet little innocent girl? Yeah, buddy. Mo worked my nerves, too, with his hating ass. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes the friends. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the story come from? Um, I'm a big, huge, huge music person. So I listen to a ton of music. So that's where the inspiration came from as far as Dominique's character. And then, of course, um, with rappers, I would say younger rappers nowadays, if you notice, it's like this big thing now to have their girl by their side. They'll name Mm -hmm. songs after them. They'll put them on mixtape and album covers. It's like this big thing. Like if you look at Kevin Gates and Drika or... um, Dirk in India and stuff like that. So that's kind of where the idea came from. Okay, so let me just school you real quick. I'm 52 years old. I have no idea. <laughs> I got a 23-year-old that's a music buff. If I, if I called him in here and asked him, he'd be like, yeah. And he'd probably look at me like, my, how you don't know? How you don't know? <laughs> I mean, I've heard some of those names as far as my satellites stay on 46, 47, and 48. I skip all the other... <laughs> So, okay, okay. So I, I follow you though. Um, uh-huh. 
Somebody said Autumn did tell the truth. She just didn't have any filter. Yeah, but her filter got on my nerves. I'm sorry. I agree with that comment. I agree. <laughs> her filter got on my last nerves. So um, they say Mo worked their nerves. Yes, he did. Let's see. I can't see this one. Oh, yeah. And I found your um, your playlist. I didn't listen to it, but I know some of them love a playlist. Yes. Love a playlist. So do I. Uh, I love when a book has a playlist. Like, that's the best. Yeah. Yeah, they love, uh, Terry is one of them. She loves um, a playlist. I can't figure out how to put this one back, but it's okay. I'll leave it there for now. So, um, like I said, it was a very intriguing story. Oops, that's a minute. Uh-oh, I'm trying to put... Mm, she said she was listening to music and Anthony Hamilton, her heart was a good song for this book. Okay. I'm going to have to go. Now I'm Anthony sure. Hamilton. I have, I'm listening to Anthony Hamilton. I have to go find that one then. Me too. I definitely will. I, I didn't listen to it. I didn't listen to the playlist. I just threw I threw it in the spoiler on the spoiler page. So, mm -hmm. so some of the things that they said, um, it was saying how when they finished. Oh, this was me. I had no business in the spoiler page because I said, oh, God, I'm scared now. I'm almost done. And they had me nervous. <laughs> so I had no business. I had no business over there at all. At all. I was looking for the spoiler where they were talking about. I must have been one of the other ones, y'all. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Maybe it's when, when Tara started. Uh, 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 I'm sorry for pausing you guys. Oh, no worries. Oh, they had me nervous too when they were talking about the pullout game. And I was like, see, I ain't even there yet. And y'all telling me stuff. <laughs> That's what I told them. I said, let me get my ass from over on this over here because I don't have no business over here at all. But they were talking about Diane and they loved her wisdom. Um, I had it earlier today. I was I was prepared. I promise you I was prepared on this end. Oh, maybe it's this one. It's 31 comments on this one. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I don't even worry about that. Um, somebody said they didn't think Mo was that bad. I love Auntie Diane. I loved her, but she had her she had her her bucket of issues too. She did. She did. She definitely did. She had her moments. I love when I what I liked, I'm gonna say this, what I liked about Diane is Diane smokes her cigarettes, she cuts you out when she needed to, but she get up on Sunday morning and play her gospel music, get her dinner ready, and we going to church. I don't yep. care what you do, <laughs> I don't care. That you robbed so and so, and you got this money. I don't. I don't want this. I don't like the way you got this money, but I'm gonna take this money, and I'm gonna pay these bills with this money. <laughs> but some people would say that that's hypo that that's hypocritical. But that it was her life, mm -hmm. and to me, um, everybody's walk with the Lord is between them and the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I think she would drop with she is. is I don't want to call her ratchet. I don't want to call her ratchet. She was a little but, ratchet. But as, <laughs> <laughs> but as ratchet as she could as she could be, because we could all be a little get, get ratchet if we uh -huh. have to be. As ratchet as she could be, she had a I felt as though she had a very good heart. Um, um she cared about people in her church, she cared about her son and her nephew. I mean, she could have let him go to the system in all honesty, you know. That's what I was just about to say. She could have, yeah, she could have let him go to the system, but she took him in and she did, I think she did the best that she could with the limited resources that um, she had. But she was a real, yep, she was a, Diane was an ideal hood mama. Who said that? Yeah. <laughs> that was Allegra, Allegra, yes. You right, Allegra. She you right. She was the ideal hood mama. And see, Allegra and Ayana from they from New Orleans. Uh-huh. So I think I think New Orleans folks know a little bit more about I, I'm I'm from I live in Atlanta, but I'm not from here. Uh -huh. And I've never grown up in certain 
areas, I guess. I hate to say that I grew up a little bit bougie. Mm-hmm. But, I, you know, I've had friends that had hood mamas, and they just intrigued me. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> they intrigued you. <laughs> they intrigued me. I could be a little ratchet in hood myself, but I'm just saying. Um, yes, I got it. I like that. I love that. The response, the responsibility. I love the role he took being responsible for Josiah. Yes. And the more he talked, the more it's like you you didn't you overlooked the bad things about Dominic and saw like Claudette. I see the good. Like, I love what she told him. She sees the good. Mm-hmm. She sees all of the good in in him. She knew the bad things, but she saw all of the good things in him too. It's like he had a good heart. And like he even said it himself. I'm working with the hand that I was dealt, mm-hmm. basically. Right. I mean, I know this is that worse, but that's basically what it was. Um, some of her principles were misplaced, but she had some good qualities. Yeah, she did. She mm-hmm. did. But I still say her walk between, hey, she ain't the only one that do that. Cuss mm-hmm. you out when she has to, and then praise the Lord in the next sentence. And that just cracks me up. <laughs> I know a lot of people that'll do it. Cause she can go right on the church. <laughs> man, what well, is the shirt that says, I think I, I I shared this on the post. I mean, I love the Lord, but I will cuss a little. I'll cuss mm-hmm. a little. Well, maybe more than a little. I call them, where's the yarn? I call them um sentence oh, enhancers, is what I call them. I don't know nothing about no stuff, no uh is it here. I know nothing about seventh war soldiers. Absolutely. <laughs> I know nothing about it. Nothing oh, about it. What's Seventh War soldiers? Explain. <laughs> that's, I believe that's the New Orleans folks. I guess they're gonna have to tap into that with you on Monday because oh, I have no idea. I have I don't no know. idea. I, I know do Ninth know. Ward. I don't know Seventh War soldiers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do know. In one of the comments on the spoiler page was um um about uh the dreams and the um. Oh gosh, the beach scenes, the dreams with um uh Owen oh, and, and, and um mm-hmm. and her dad um boys her dad's name Bryson 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 mm-hmm. I love that name too I have a, I have known some Brysons student wise but um <laughs> the seat the the dream sequence someone said that um well she that she's the only person that that the dream sequences um, took her out. It's like they reveal so much. Mm-hmm. Even though they were deceased characters, um, Bryson and Eve played a very big uh, part in the storyline. They did, yes. I hate that um, that her mother was such a that's just ratchet on my in my opinion. Uh, yeah, yeah. To so abandon your own child, yeah. Yeah, you you get a lot of deep points in this um, book. How deep, how deep did you have to dig to come up with some of that? Mm, I feel like I really didn't have to dig so deep because number one, I work in social services, so I hear stuff twenty four seven all the time. Mm-hmm. Then I'm a, I'm a black woman too, so we deal with our own trauma and our own issues within our own family. So mm-hmm. it's just pulling from those experiences and those the things that I've heard and seen from my family, mm-hmm. my fiance's family, mm-hmm. because it's just it's generational things. Right. So, <clears throat> but really, when I think about it, I didn't have to pull too deep. Okay, this is very true. Ayanna. The spirits of our ancestors are real. I believe yes. that. It's I true. believe that. I believe in. Um, I believe on a lot of God's favor that I have right now in my life is from my great, great, great grandmother's prayers. I say that all the time. Mm-hmm. Some of the blessings that we have are from generational prayers. I know for a fact, not just my great grandmother, my grandmother was praying praying for her grandchildren and her great greats, you know, on our generation on down um, the line. So I truly believe that spirit of ancestors are real. And I believe they both felt like Eve was always around or Bryson was always, um, was always around them. Mm -hmm. They felt their spirits always, you know, around them. Right. Um, Dominic was a piece of work, boy. He was. That's exactly how George described him (laughs) when they went to the jail. (laughs) 
Oh, I felt so bad for George when they went to jail. Oh my God. <laughs> like you are totally blindsided. Like, oh, oh I don't God. know if I could have did it. First of all, I don't I don't do jails. I don't put money on books. I don't I tell I, I have told my child that all his life you make smart choices. When I sit here in the Alabama state, you going down here in the South Bar, I mean further south than where we live, make smart choices because I don't do I don't, I don't, I don't do jails. I don't put uh -huh. money on books. You, you, I don't, whatever works for you works. I mean, I'm sure I probably would have, but I just thank God that we didn't have to go down that road. <laughs> right. I went down that road at all. So I would have been devastated myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually one of my favorite scenes to write. I don't know. Why it just was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> George, poor George, he just didn't have a clue. He didn't. And then the fact that he thought she was joking at first, he was like, right. get me out of here. Right. When, especially when he was like, I want to go to the Zaxby's girl now. I want to get to Zaxby's for they clothes. Yeah. I was going to I was about to fall out. I was like, <laughs> hey, she said, Zaxby's ain't going nowhere. We go, I'm going to get you to Zaxby's before. Like, who asked for Zaxby's? Oh my God. <laughs> Oh. oh my goodness. Okay, so and the whole Waffle House. I swear I'm telling you, I was trying to I was trying to place these places. <laughs> I said, what Waffle House she talking about? And then you said, I wanna think I wanna say you said something about Fulton Industrial. Uh -huh. Some place you said, and I was like, Oh, I know where that is. <laughs> I know that I know that Waffle House. I gotta go over there and see if this this if the description fits um fits it. But the fact that he was just so enamored with um, Claudette, like he mm -hmm. hung out at her job and he didn't want nobody to serve him, but her, like he, she just really, I just loved her spirit all the way around. I did too. I thought Claudette was just the the sweetest. She's sweet. Oh, y'all just said she was devastated for George. Yeah, baby, I was too. I think I we felt, all were, child. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, who is this? Dominique should have got him a job. And Waffle House. Got a job. And Waffle House. <laughs> oh. Who is that? I, can't, I don't know who that is. I can't tell who that was that said that, but that's funny. That's true. That's hilarious. <laughs> he had nothing else to do. I mean, he had other stuff to do. Right. Um, but um, I was so scared. I wasn't scared when they... Um, when they robbed, I knew it, wasn't, it was too early in the book for something that was gonna happen to them. Mm -hmm. When they robbed, when they robbed um, the guy at the um, <clears throat> at his um, hotel, mm -hmm. um, and homegirl, ugh, Tia, I mean, that, <laughs> that's that's ratchetness all the way. I don't really want you. I got all these other men, all these sugar daddies, but um, I really want you, but I don't want you. Mm -hmm. You know, we get these licks together. So mm -hmm. I really thought she was setting him up when he went to the club to find her. Mm -hmm. And she was um, looking all suspicious. And I was like, oh, something get ready to happen. Mm -hmm. Something get ready to happen because she acting awfully shady. But you didn't go that route. You let him leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> she was very, very loyal to Dominic, even though he wasn't in love with her. But she she was in love with him. So wait a minute, I, I missed some stuff. He also affirmed her positivity and real facts about street life, hard living. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, yeah, corny dude. Until she went off, I was like, why when she went off on him was I clapping? Like, yes, get him, sis. <laughs> get him, get him, please, please get him, like. The preppy, the pre well, I'm a, yeah, the preppy frat boy, he's smart and all of that good stuff. But Eric, mm -hmm. yup, Eric. But he wanted the same thing. It wasn't like you was I wanna say I wanna say he wasn't checking for her, but he wasn't checking, checking for her like that. Mm-mm. No. He wanted what he was trying to throw and say that Dominic wanted for her. You just you just trying to get good with her so that you can sleep with her. Mm hmm So, oh, I thought it was so sweet when he painted her toenails. I was like, see, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> this could 
Nigga, sat here and polished her toenails. Y'all, ain't nobody else gonna tell me. Y'all, rest of y'all gonna tell me y'all wasn't like. And y'all corny too, then. <laughs> if it didn't touch you, y'all corny too, then. Because I was like, that is the sweetest thing. Like, thug, you know, gonna sit on the floor and paint her toenails. <laughs> You, he didn't think he was good enough for her. Huh? Nick, Nick didn't think he was good enough. Oh, Nick. Yeah, Dominic. Bro, when you start saying the nicknames, I'm going to be like, wait, who? Ah, yeah. Very true. Yeah. True. And then, um, who is this? When a man polishes your feet, he's gone. Ain't that the truth? Right. Or do your hair for you. Help you do your hair. That's it. <laughs> Take these braids out. Uh-huh. Here, cut this string from this weave. <laughs> <laughs> ah, do all of that good stuff. Yeah, for that me. is the absolute truth. Yes, all of that good stuff for me. Um, there's so much. Wait a minute. Um. Olivia, you talked about Auntie Diane wasn't no joke. Oh, Sean had put it in the spoiler that um, um, it took with her the fact that she, at the Diane asked him to go to church and how he had just <laughs> got back from hitting the lick, being high, and then sat at the, up at the waffle. <laughs> <laughs> And then with the church. <laughs> oh, and it was see, I don't care. I don't care how bad he was. Like we keep saying he has some very good qualities about himself. And how when the little girl had just lost her mother mm -hmm. and when he was sitting there crying, first of all, Diana had no business dragging that boy to the front of the he drags him to the front of the altar like, you going to get this prayer. Yes. If if you don't think you need it, I know you need it. And dragged him to the front. And and um, and the little girl, how she grabbed his hand or his leg first, and then he did it back for her and was holding her. He could mm -hmm. feel her pain of losing a parent at such right. a um, early at such a, age. At such a young age, right, right. Yeah. Ayana, you're right. That ninja did stay high 24 7. <laughs> 24 7. He was so high out of his mind the night that he um the night that he went looking for homeboy. Mm-hmm. I was like, in my mind, I was begging him, listen to Mo. I don't even like Mo, but please listen to Mo. Please. Right. But he was just so messed up and so gone. But then that goes into the deeper conversation. Okay, he's self-medicating. So what are you running from? Right. Uh, let's see. He loved up on her the best way he knew how. He was really, he was. He was a sweetheart. He did, he was, yes. He was. Yeah, that was it was it was a it was quite a few emotional moments. I know I'm forgetting some, but y'all gotta help me. But there was quite a few emotional moments that you was like, that's I think that's what took me so long to read it. I really wanted to savor it and enjoy the ride of the story and mm -hmm. get once I realized it was not gonna be your typical oh thug turns into a famous he wasn't even taking his rap career seriously, like Mm -mm. He he had one foot in and one foot out the door. And the way he just kept saying that he didn't, you know, he didn't, I'm not, I can't take care of my family off of this. Like he didn't even have, he knew he was good, but it's like he didn't even have the confidence to think that he was that good that it was going to take him to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I, I hated that part. I hated the self loathing part um, of him, but that's where Claudette comes in mm -hmm. that she really, um, um, that she really, um, I want to say fed into him, but he still wasn't accepting it. He really wasn't accepting it. He accepted it, but he was still trying to keep her at, at, at like, you, like somebody said, he didn't feel as though she was, that he was good enough for her. Not until he went to jail mm -hmm. and the older gentleman that was in um, the cell with him. Polo, yeah. Started ministering to him. 
Mm-hmm. Polo, Polo is like my under- favorite character. I love Polo. Is he like an undercover preacher? He's an undercover preacher. Uh, I know. Polo was not a preacher. I think he was an alcoholic, actually. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know man. that. Yeah, Paul, I know that. the voice of reason. <laughs> right. Wait, what is? I missed this part. He was high as hell, but knew what he was doing when that punk threatened club. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's Allegra. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's I was true. scared. I was scared. That should have known. Homeboy was like a punk because he. I mean, like. You making all these threats, but you ain't came up off of nothing. You knew where Claudette was. You never did. You you just was running your mouth. Mm-hmm. On the internet at that, so. Right, right. Um, and then Dominic was not an internet or social media type of person. So he's just letting all this stuff fly because he doesn't keep up with that. Mm-hmm. So I'm Mo is sure. the one who chose him, you know. Oh, that's Terry. Yeah, it did. It made a lot of sense when he said that. Mm-hmm. It made a lot of sense when he said um, his mom committed suicide in front of him. Yeah, that ex- that does that explained everything. Mm-hmm. It made everything a little bit more clear. Mm-hmm. Um, I still don't understand why Diane was she couldn't keep a, a job, or however he put it, and how he. If he didn't do the things that he was doing, the lights would be off. Or mm-hmm. she complained about everything, but she had no problem taking that money. Mm-mm. Now, is she? Where did her character stem from? Diane, Just that social work based background. No, Diane is actually a combination of people I know in real life and personal life. <laughs> My personal life. <laughs> that don't come from social work. That come from my real life. <laughs> I like how Nick let Chloe know he really didn't understand all the ins and outs of managing his music and streaming and streaming. Right. So like mm-hmm. he's got all of these chicks coming through mm-hmm. and ain't doing nothing with them. Just Mm-mm. just collecting them. Collecting them and sending them in his safe. And it's like, wait, bruh. I love the way she negotiated that six thousand dollars off the top of her head. Uh, and he liked it too, so he said, "Switch seats." <laughs> so that's where the the I think the attraction first starts is when he sees her doing that because he like he mm-hmm. likes that in her, you know. Mm-hmm. I thought it started when they was in, when they was in Walmart buying ice cream. I think in that scene he knew it was something about her, but he just didn't mm-hmm. know what. And then in the he next was scene, he her. was intrigued by her. And then in the next scene, whenever they go and meet Vaughn, and then she mm-hmm. speaks up and she negotiates the deal for him, then that's when it clicks. And he's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. So what's, I want to say what's next. I feel like I'm jumping ahead. But I like the fact that this was a standalone. It wasn't like, I didn't feel like we was just left with a, cl- a cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I knew it was, it, yeah. That's how I knew it was love. He left. Yeah, hey, ain't nobody. Let me hold three thousand dollars. I don't know if I'm gonna hold it. <laughs> I might pinch a twenty off here. <laughs> <laughs> now for real, but I'm just saying that's trust, and I don't even know you. Right. That's that's real trust. That's real deal trust. And then when he got in trouble the first time, and she was like, "You have it. You have the money." Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't have no money. And she was like, we got it. Mm-hmm. So you're going to go ahead and call Vaughn's lawyer. Like she was putting her foot down. And he was acting a little dominant too with her. Mm-hmm. Like dominant, dominant, BDS dominant traits. Like, uh oh, wait a minute. Are, mm-hmm. we, are, we, are we crossing the, the lines over here somewhere? Ah, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know enough about that. <laughs> craft that in the store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Rock. I liked Rock's character, too. I, w- I know she wanted to slap fire out of Rock when he was like, oh, I got to talk to Nick about this, about you being here. You can't be here. Mm-hmm. And she's like, he don't control my money. Not at all. Not at all. I, um, I thought 
Okay, so you called it when they went to the bar. I was mm-hmm. like, that's the U bar. I know what that said. That's the U bar. <laughs> you ain't getting that one off on me. I know that's the U bar. You <laughs> slipped it around a little bit. That's right on up there. And, you got um, me. So that's at Camp Creek because I've been to the U bar before. Yeah, you I got know. me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what that one was. <laughs> I thought um, uh, when she was there, and he was, I thought he was going to start rapping. I thought he was actually there. Mm-hmm. And when she was, you know, she was like, she felt his vibe or whatever. She's squirming all along. <laughs> all <laughs> on his lap. <laughs> all on Autumn's lap. Poor Autumn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. Ayana said, listen, my favorite scene was Diane. Let it be known. She knew everything happening. She sure did. Mm-hmm. Oh, your little friend. When she called her little girl. That cracks me up. Little girl. <laughs> <clears throat> Come on in here and peel these potatoes. When she said, well, I'm just like her. When she said, Where's your? I mean, I know how to peel a potato with a knife, but where's your potato peeler? She said, potato peeler. Girl, you better cut off your head and you better not cut off a whole lot of potato and you better get enough skin off. <laughs> yeah, that is like the running joke in our house. I'm like, Does anybody in my family own a damn potato peeler? I don't want to peel this potato with no knife. <laughs> A potato pill, you better have one. That's like my mother is stuck on an um, ice cream scoop. You better have an ice cream scoop. And her sister used to be like, you so bougie. I don't know how we grew up in the same house. Get a spoon and scoop, that the spoon ice cream. And scoop it out. My mother is like, I need to go find you. Well, let me go buy you one. So that- <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think it's going to be like the Heights is a bunch of standalones. Um... Yeah, because we I don't I don't feel as though you left us on a cliffhanger. I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, in um Josiah's story, we'll we'll still see what's going on with um Nick and um Claudette for sure. Well, I'm saying for sure, but is that you can't you can't have Josiah without Dominic and Claudette. Exactly, and you're right. In his story, you actually I think you get quite a bit of Dominique and Claudette because Dominique is such an integral part of Josiah. So Mm -hmm. if you think about it, I mean, he kind of raised Josiah himself. I mean, Diane was there, but Mm -hmm. Josiah and Dominique have that bond. Right. And when you would say, and see, see, I'm telling you, I work over there in, in weed and seed area. Um, when, when it, when he was just reminiscing about, taking Josiah to um, riding a bus and taking him to the Mercedes Benz. I was like, the Mercedes Benz ain't been up that long. Now, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what fiction is. But I uh-huh. was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I was still trying to figure out where they lived in the shotgun house. Um, I was trying to fit when you said Marietta, because see, I live in Kyle County. So when you said Marietta, George lived in Marietta, I was like, hmm, okay. I know where Mary. I know Marietta ain't far from me. I swear I was trying to place everything. <laughs> I was trying to place everything. Listen, I was remixing stuff, changing stuff up. And ain't nothing wrong with it. Like you cannot say, um, you cannot say uh, she didn't because you didn't give enough landmarks to, to to be able to dispute anything. You can't dispute anything. Mm-hmm. At all, because we got definitely got Walmart. It's a zillion and one colleges here. Yep. Um, <laughs> yes, honey, it's how it's shotgun houses here. I can tell you a story about one. <laughs> um, blind date I went on and was like, bruh, ah! <laughs> bruh, you made Diane's shotgun house seem beautiful, you know, warm and cozy. Because the one I went by was not warm and cozy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I was just like, we could have met somewhere because I I have a whole different opinion of you now, sir. Oh man, <laughs> the Waffle House. Yeah, the Waffle House is a is a staple. It is. We go to the Waffle House um, afterwards. Um, I ain't hating on nobody. Don't start. I ain't hating on nobody's um, shotgun house. I'm just saying Diane's shotgun house scene. Nice, warm, and cozy. The one I went to wasn't. Uh, she was talking about Diane seemed like a mansion compared to the one I went to. <laughs> Girl, like, you know, 
that's that but that's that extra love you put into what that's the extra love and taking care of what you got that's mm -hmm. all yes oh yes thank you Devin. the video shoot that was cool that was cool he was late and she's ready to get in his ass about being late Mm -hmm. How about people, them boys, some good, good, and they was fine with it. They didn't care. Ah, he knew how to take care of the situation. <laughs> he knew how to take care of the situation. He did. I love the fact that you use the resources that um, college students have, mm -hmm. um, the knowledge that each one of them have to be able to help him get to the next level because he had no, Mo couldn't have done none of that stuff. Mm -mm. And the fact that he didn't have the money or the um, forethought to invest in anything and put together a video. Mm -hmm. Like all of that was done on social media on a limited budget or oh, I'm going to just give him some weed or this is going to help me. As, that's the best way to describe it is the barter system. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help you do this and then this is going to get me some recognition. And then when your other friends ask about who did that, I'm going to be able to tell them and that's going to open doors for these college students. Exactly. Exactly. And you gave us just enough information about um, <laughs> Autumn's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> like he was a main not a main character but he was just enough of a character just for her description of her uncle and his friend like autumn was living a good life like she, she definitely a, was <laughs> she's a spoiled diva so will she ever get will she have a story is she in your thought process for a story some people have requested a story for autumn and i'm thinking about it because she's such an interesting character in her own right she really is so I'm thinking on it. I might give her like a short story or something like that. Uh huh. What are you saying? A leg with gentrification? Uncle Kelvin. Yes, bunny. Uncle Kelvin was funny to me. And he have not a lick of word. Well, I mean, no more than her repeating what he said. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm sure they are here too. Oh, yeah. Some of them. Well, I don't know if they consider those shotgun houses, but in some of the areas that um, I've worked in, um people are going in and re redoing them mm -hmm. and moving you they moved away because of us now they coming back in and buying them up yep that's the same here in houston us, and trying to move us out but you got some diehards in some areas here that's like i ain't going nowhere mm -hmm. you're not going to buy my house i ain't going i got some students that live with their grandmamas that's like i ain't selling my house i ain't going nowhere so they can try. Yes, I did too. There was there were there were some positive um role models. Even Vaughn, yeah, Vaughn I feel like he was. He was trying to encourage him. Um Quentin was the uh the lawyer. His lawyer, yeah. That there's not too many white people you know named Quentin. Mm-mm. <laughs> he was white. <laughs> You gave him the name Quentin. I did. <laughs> but he, he was definitely he was a positive role model. He did. He yeah. was, he tried his best, you know. He's that cool white dude. Mm -hmm. that, 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 you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you out the best I can, but I'm gonna mm -hmm. talk shit to you so you get your shit together. Mm -hmm. And I definitely like Polo. I really liked um Polo. I almost felt bad when he said his wife. I wanted to, I wanted to like, can we call her and tell her to give him another chance? <laughs> I know. I love Polo so much. He's just my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he didn't get right. His wife was like, deuces, I am out. You know, and it sounded like Polo was doing petty crimes. Yep, that's exactly what it was. Yes. And he was just a career criminal. I mean, just petty stuff. Just in and out, in and out. And then he's older now. And now he's looking back and realizing, like, damn, I missed so much because I, I wanted to be stupid. And so he kind of saw himself in Dominic a little bit. So mm -hmm. that's why he was saying, you know, what you going to do this time around? And he was like, this time I, I'm changing. So, you know, mm -hmm. you look like you've been here a lot, too. So it looks like you need to change, too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But y'all have any questions? Because you know we're coming up on that hour mark. I try not to go past um, the hour. So they say, will we see Polo again? Yes. 
Yes, she yeah. is. <clears throat> yeah, because at the end, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, he said he talks to Polo a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. Okay, do you have any um authors you admire? Any authors that I admire? Definitely, uh, Nia Forrester. I love her writing style. Like it's mm -hmm. just so simplistic and just perfect. Mm -hmm. Like that's who I want to be when I grow up. Like I love her writing style. Okay. Anybody else? Um, definite shout out to Keisha Irvin because before anybody had really read my book, I seen one night she followed me on Instagram. Okay. And then the next day I was just getting bombarded with like comments and people were just buying my book and they were like, Keisha Irvin is reading your book. And I was like, oh my God. I don't know how Sean found it. I don't care how Sean found it. <laughs> I know you have a new fan base in all of us. Um, oh, thank here. you guys. Um, I don't know. I, I hope your reviews numbers went up. They definitely did. Know. Thank you guys yeah, so we, much. <laughs> we was on it. We was on it. So we got to give kudos to um, to Sean, and that's why I, I I have to. I'm gonna have to start doing um, Reader Wednesdays a lot more because I'm telling you, these ladies. They introduced me, and I'm usually I'm kind of up on it. I don't uh -huh. turn my nose away from um from any you know any new art or anything. Um, but I definitely love the fact that they just they threw out um um a whole lot of new authors. It was added to my just made my TR list longer. And somebody <laughs> even accused me of um it was my fault that um. That they that they money was gonna be funny or something she said to me. Let me see. Sean said I like that Diamond Club would talk in the mornings about her pregnancy. Yeah, I think that scared him too. Um, let's see. My favorite from Diane is when she said, "Y'all fucking dating or both." I was shook for Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> Diane said, "Look at here, little girl. You don't tell me what's going on." <laughs> um, Ayana is saying, "Are you familiar with?" Um, Love Belvin. Yes, yes, I love Love Belvin too. Um, we BFFs, girl. Yes, honey. Ah! You, I'm telling you, you got new. You got a whole new, um, a whole new fan base, and they're gonna start stalking you. They already stalking. I tried to skip this question, but I'm not. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it up here. What's the ETA for the next book? Oh, I knew it was coming. I knew it. <laughs> So the next book is it's completed, but it's in the, the rough stages so though. It's still <laughs> it still needs to go through the editing process, but it is completed. So it'll be coming that's, soon. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. That's good. To, Terry, I just I asked. Next book up to, she's gonna she's gonna <laughs> keep going until I say it. Until you I ask. <laughs> until I ask. So it's coming very soon. They're saying, do you have a readers good book group? Y'all, don't put me on front street. <laughs> at, don't do that to me. Do you have a readers group on Facebook? No. Listen, I, I'm still trying to navigate Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got about one post on there. <laughs> Okay, so they're saying you got to come to Indie Love 2021. Okay, so let me just clear this up for you all right now. There is more than likely will not be an Indie Love 2021. We will probably do something virtual. I I said this publicly um, Tuesday when I was chatting with um, Bailey West that I don't foresee us doing um, a 2021 because... Um, <laughs> because this COVID thing, I mean, I ain't ready to take no vaccine. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> I ain't ready to take no vaccine. And I plan a year out. So there is no planning. Have been, there's, I haven't been able to do any planning. So unless something truly shifts between now and the next three to four months, we probably won't 
have an actual physical event until 2022. And then, of course, Ray would definitely be, never shut up. <laughs> um, I ain't trying to turn into one either. Um, Ray would definitely be um, invited. But there's a process to um, Indie Love. So everybody that was supposed to be at Indie Love this year automatically had first dibs for if we were to do something for next year. And I have to honor that. If I don't honor my word, then what am I? You know what I'm saying? So right, right. I, have to honor, I have to honor my word. I'm not shunning anyone because you would definitely, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you would definitely be on my list in the near future if you were to do um, um, events. Of so. course, of course. Yeah. So, um, so, oh my God, I'm not doing this with y'all. I'm not doing this with y'all. Hey, see how they, you can't put that kind of pressure on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, by 2022, you should have a whole, you and then they go a whole series by then. You can't put that kind of pressure on her either. A she whole series by 2022. <laughs> yeah. Ray has a life. You heard her say a fiance. That yeah. means there's a wedding being worked on. She works a job. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. So Devin is asking about um paperbacks. Will you have any print copies? Sooner than you think. Okay. So if you need to use Indie Love and you know you don't have a Facebook page, I mean a um group, feel free. We do art I do Arthur Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I encourage authors to promote, share. I promote your um I try to um promote across the board mm -hmm. from um here to the my main page to Instagram. Um, I have a method to my madness. People don't always, always understand my method to my madness, but I have a method to my madness. So um, Sharon saying, who's the next book about? The next book is about Josiah. We start digging. We be finding out. We be know, we know. Ooh. Like, who is, <laughs> who's next? Josiah and some little girl. You named some little girl. And I was like, who that? Who is and Jade. Josiah and Jade. Who is she? Ah, you'll see in the next book. The little girl that he was creep <laughs> creeping around with. Ah. Oh, she's not gonna tell us. He, we'll see this. Carrie says, "Please keep us informed." Yes, but the next book is about Josiah, which I think is great. Which yes, I think is absolutely. You get to hear about how Josiah is functioning away at school, how he's handling all that. Now you did. So you say he was in Athens. I already know where he's going to school. Where? Let me see. Let me see if you guess right. What, okay, what school is he gonna go to Athens and play football? <laughs> for? One. This is Georgia now. This is Georgia. You're right. So, you're right. <laughs> I won't say, but yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Sharon, you say you missed it. Okay. Well, I do put this on. Um, I will leave it up, but I also do put it on. Um, my YouTube channel, and um. Tara said, will book two immediately follow book one as far as timeline? Um, let me think. Does it? Yes, it does. It does. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it, we're not jumping into the near future. It's still pretty, pretty new. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Sharon, if you, um, <clears throat> if you missed it or if anybody missed anything, and I'm sure LSU is not in Georgia. What is Who said that? that? <laughs> no, she's not moving her character to Louisiana. No. <laughs> no. They're going to live right here. They don't already bought a house in Sandy Springs. What is you talking about? <laughs> and Sandy Springs is straight up off 285. <laughs> I mean, don't tell me. I know. I know. I've been here long enough to know. I wasn't born. I wasn't raised here. I wasn't uh, born and raised here, but I've been here long enough to work my way around. <laughs> but um, if you missed anything... Miss Ray will be with the see the see see me show how much love I have because I don't do this. I really don't do this. <laughs> but I'm going to plug Ayana and Allegra. Um the bourbon. Y'all go ahead and plug it. Plug it at the bottom. Tell me, remind me. I'm in the group, but they know I don't talk. I don't talk in groups. 
I've been kicked out of groups because I don't say much. Oh, no. But, yeah. If you're not a member of the Bourbon Book, come on, Faith. Come on, Ayana and Allegra. What is it? See how quiet that ain't got now? Josiah doesn't have a stake. Girl, tell us the name of your group. Bourbon, thank you, Allegra. That's Allegra. Bourbon Street Bookers. Ray will, if you missed any of this, Ray will be chatting with um, the Bourbon Street Bookers on Monday at seven. Is the time, is it at seven o'clock? Okay, Ray, did we lose you? Oh, I'm here. I'm here. Oh. Are you, is it at seven? I do believe it's at seven and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Six central, seven o'clock, yeah. Y'all gonna come asking me about six central and I said, look, when y'all be talking about central time, I'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's I'm me, talking. I have to Google. I, I'm one of those people. That's why I said, <laughs> I think it's seven o'clock. It's one of them times, six or seven, but I will be there. <laughs> okay, six central, so that's, Seven Eastern Standard Time, I believe. So um, Devin said, "Listen, just put me up with Dominic. I know she know him in real life. Yeah, <laughs> he got to be real. Somebody <laughs> could be a cougar. They could, I could be his cougar. Who could be his <laughs> cougar? Like, oh, Terry? Oh my goodness! Yes, baby. Yes, yes." And then they did some, I think some people did a couple of visuals, I believe, but. Um, I saw that, I saw that. Yeah, they, the people get real with it. I'm telling you, prepare yourself, prepare they do. yourself. That's what Ayana was telling me. She was like, do you have visuals for your characters? I was like, in my head I do. I don't have any any real ones. <laughs> Baby, they somebody, they, they'll create, they'll find some. I, I was they'll like, where y'all found these people at? <laughs> Did they come close to what you what was in your head? Um, I seen a couple for Claudette that came close to what I had in my head. Okay. None for Dominique yet. Okay, okay, okay. Sometimes people present. I saw some, a, a so called visual today, and I was like, "Who that supposed to be?" <laughs> that ain't him. I don't know what book you was reading, but that <laughs> that ain't him. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, the cover was good. The cover was good. All right, last few questions, ladies. Last few questions. Yes, it was a very good book. They tell they telling the truth. They telling the truth, right? I'm telling you, you might have to prepare yourself. You might have to have a sit down chat with your fiance and be like, now look here. Oh I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This is a strong <clears throat> group of women. And they're not just in this group, they are mm -hmm. in other groups. And when the word starts spreading and we start promoting, I'm telling you it's gonna it's gonna blow up. It's all in God's timing though. Everything is yeah. in God's timing. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And so we gotta give Sean Chadwick much, much kudos for introducing. Thank you so um, much. Thank you. you. To us. Um however you found it, I'm so grateful you did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, the uh, Monique, the visuals, the visuals I saw were in um, the Bourbon Street Bookers. Um, they had visuals. I don't do a lot of that stuff over here. This, you know, y'all have to call it boring. I don't care. I don't care. I don't do a lot of that over here. But um, um, I know Bourbon Street Bookers. I think that's where I saw it. That's where I saw the visuals. Like I said, mm -hmm. I found the playlist. Um, where did I find the place? I must have been snooping on your in, on your Instagram or I have the playlist on my website. Instagram. Yeah. Okay, on your web. Okay, on Instagram. Yep, I found it, and I went and um, I went and threw it over there. So, all right, ladies, it is after. It's been over an hour. I don't want to take up too much more of Ray's time. Um, I thank y'all for um hanging out to me. Um, oh, uh, thanks to Sean. She said she had, Tara said she had already purchased the book. It was in her TBR list. Usually Tara be at the last minute, like she on a final exam. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> I made it to the, I made it to the live. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I look forward to um, being on the other end come Monday. 
um, and supporting my girls as they chat with you. So I truly yes. appreciate um, you taking the time out and um, talking to me at the last minute. You all, I want you to hold on before I end, when I after I end this, um, Ray. Okay. You all have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Next Friday, a week from today is Christmas. Um, so you all have a wonderful holiday. We'll still be chit-chatting a little bit um, in the groups. Don't forget our challenge that is going on, the December challenge, um, to read Holiday Read. read. Um, those of you who participated in the $10 gift, uh, Amazon um, Christmas Secret Santa, thank you for participating. Don't forget, um, you're going to share um, your book that you purchased. Now, I know what's going to happen. I'm not going to share it because uh, LB drops on Monday. So I know that that's what everybody's saving their coins for. <laughs> and so the page is going to be flooded with Love Belvin's book. I already know that. But I also know Sheree Lewis has a book coming out. Um, and I believe, I feel like Nia has a new book coming out that's coming out soon too. I believe she has something dropping soon as well. So keep your eyes out for all those new releases. And um, yeah, I have, yep, I got two this year as well, Tara. I got two this year as well. All right, ladies, you all have a great, great weekend. And I will see y'all probably in the first of the year. <laughs>